When a UFO crashes in the woods, a strange entity escapes and the government is sent to cover it up. Can UFO researchers expose the truth before more people die trying to kill the alien phantom? The race is on. In the deep woods of Wisconsin, a UFO crashes. Deputy Wright sees it impact the earth and reports that it caused a forest fire. He requests fire emergency vehicles, however, transmission on his radio is faulty. So, he decides to go on foot to investigate. Meanwhile, at the U.S. Space Surveillance Center, officers pick up a bogey on radar, and Colonel Henderson is asked to take a look at it for himself. The screen shows where it breached the USA's electric fence, the route it took, and where it crashed. The officer comments that no known aircraft can maneuver the way this one did. When the junior officers say they will report the crash of an aircraft, Henderson tells them it was a meteorite, and its apparent motion was due to their equipment failure. They're like, but sir, and he says, is that clear? Henderson calls the government and states he's got a confirmed fallen angel and to implement Operation Falcon immediately. Meanwhile, Wright is approaching the flaming crash site and an invisible entity making a high-pitched sound is speeding toward him. He calls out to it, but the phantom smacks into him. He screams, and with a flash of white light, he is gone. The whole town of Townsend, Wisconsin is being evacuated due to what is claimed to be a highly toxic spill. Deep Throat meets with Mulder and tells him Henderson works for the U.S. Reclamation Department. After an aircraft is shot down, he makes sure the technology doesn't get into the wrong hands. He instituted a reclamation in Townsend and within 24 hours, all evidence of the UFO will be gone. Deep Throat suggests to Mulder to go on his own to photograph and investigate what the government is trying to hide. Fox Mulder goes it alone on foot and sneaks around the perimeter. He's not on an official FBI case. Rather, this is to satisfy his own curiosity and to obtain evidence. He finds the area highly guarded and crawling with military personnel. Mulder sneaks into the camp under a jeep. Rambo would be proud. He watches from afar and can see the soldiers in biohazard suits spraying the area. There is a triangular shape smashed into the ground, which appears to be a ship. Just as he takes a few pictures, a guard catches him and knocks him out. Back at headquarters, Henderson interviews him and tells him he violated a U.S. government quarantine, which is a federal crime. He is told to forget what he thought he saw. Mulder is put into a detention cage next to an eccentric NICAP UFO investigating club man named Max Fennig. Max sits to chat with him, then asks if he saw anything because he was captured in the woods so fast he didn't get the chance. In the morning, Scully arrives to retrieve him and Max is gone. Scully reports that their supervisor, Chief McGrath, sent her, and he told her he wants to shut down the X-Files and fire Mulder from the FBI. Mulder says that it couldn't have been a toxic spill since it was miles from any road. Scully says the government lied about that because it was a downed Libyan fighter jet carrying a nuclear warhead. Mulder laughs and asks her if she really believes that story. I'm doubting it too. I mean, why would Libya make an explosive device and fly it to Wisconsin? Do they hate the Packers that much? And what about all the cheese that would get destroyed? They hear helicopters searching for someone, but no human could have walked away from that wreckage. There is an entity, something that is warping space, prowling through the forest. It has trouble getting past the laser fence, but then it goes for it and is free. Mulder checks into a hotel to investigate more, though Scully warns him his dismissal hearing is the next morning. Someone has ransacked his hotel room. It was Max as they catch him trying to escape through the bathroom window. Scully pulls a gun on him, but Mulder grabs him and asks what he's looking for. Max says he's a big fan of his. The members of the NICAP have been following his research on UFOs and the X-Files for years. 
Max is so happy to meet them both and admits he's read articles Mulder has written under pseudonyms and thinks they're great. Scully utters, amazing. Then Max replies, do you really want to see something amazing? And skips away towards his Airstream trailer. Inside Max's home are all kinds of UFO paraphernalia and electronic devices. It's a regular mystery of science exhibit. Scully notices bottles of medicine for psychotic disorders and seizures on his dresser. He monitors all emergency calls and plays Sheriff Wright's call from the two nights before. Then 30 minutes later, a call comes in requesting medevac for a man down with severe burns. There are screams, and the fire crew then says, We've got a situation here. What the heck? And then the tape goes blank. Henderson is on the phone with command, and he says they put up a tight net. The thing will not get away this time. Mulder and Scully visit the temporary shelter for evacuees at the school to talk to Deputy Wright's widow. She's angry that she isn't allowed to retrieve her husband's body or even see him. She's scared because the government threatened to withdraw his pension if she talks to anybody about what happened. The lights go out in the gym and there is a high-pitched noise. Henderson gets a report of their target in the southwest quadrant. He gives orders for the soldiers to surround, search, and destroy it. The men enter, fully armed. They hear some noises, but see nothing. Suddenly, the entity zooms right into them. They go flying. There is a bright flash of white light as they scream in terror. Mother and Scully visit the emergency room where Wright and the fire crew's bodies were taken. They try to speak to Dr. Oppenheimer, who is on call, but he refuses. Mulder asks how they threatened him, and he gives in and says the bodies were burned, and it looked like ionizing radiation burns. The government took the bodies away before any autopsy could be performed. Scully says such burns fit with a nuclear missile, and Mulder counters that it also fits with what they found at other UFO crashes. Suddenly, Henderson's men who were attacked are brought in. It is the whole crew, and they are badly burned. Mulder approaches Henderson and tells him they both want the same thing, except he's chasing this creature down to kill it, leaving it no choice but to defend itself. Mulder tells Henderson he should revise his tactics before more men are killed. Henderson then tells the doctor to have the FBI agents removed. Dr. Oppenheimer tells Henderson he's in charge here, and he requests that Scully stay on to help since she's a medical doctor. Meanwhile, Mulder pays a visit to Max and finds him having a seizure on the floor. He holds him so he doesn't hit his head, and soon Max comes out of it. He says this is the first epileptic event he's had in seven years. He tells Mulder they started suddenly when he was 10. The doctor claims he must have had a head injury, but Max doesn't remember anything like that happening. He goes on to say he had many such events and would wake up in a place and not know how he got there, having no memory of the attack. He wants to lie down and Mulder helps him. While his head is turned, he notices a scar right behind his ear. Scully comes home after a night at the hospital and reports that all but two of the men died. Mulder has been researching the scar and shows Scully that two women who never met and lived thousands of miles from each other, both had the same scar and both claimed to have been abducted by aliens. Mulder says he believes Max was previously abducted too. Scully reminds him they have a plane to catch in an hour if they get to his hearing on time. Mulder asks her to look at Max's scar and she agrees. At the Space Surveillance Center, they, as well as the Air Force now, detect another meteor, much larger in size now, hovering over Townsend. The lady thinks it's funny that they make her call the UFO a meteor, because she knows. At that time, some being enters Max's trailer, and he starts bleeding from his ear. Then there is a white flash. On the way to the airport, they call on Max, but find him missing, and his blood on his pillow. Inside, they hear the scanner report an unidentified trespass at the waterfront, so they head there. At the dock, two military police approach Max to bring him in. Henderson warns to be cautious of their 
target. Moments later, Mulder and Scully arrive at their jeep and find the two MPs' bodies burned. They hear Max screaming for them to stop inside a warehouse, so they enter. Mulder stays to comfort Max while Scully is taken to Henderson and explains the man is delusional and they should not take violent action against him. The infrared detector senses three beings inside the warehouse, which confuses Scully. They have set explosives around the perimeter and are about to enter. While inside, Max keeps saying they're going to take him again, and he's scared. Max then sees the entity slam right into them, and Mulder goes flying across the room. When he looks up, he sees a shaking Max is being pulled up by a light beam. Max remains suspended and unresponsive, then in a big flash, he's gone. It is reported that the scanner only detects one figure inside, so Henderson says it's time to blast the door and enter. Mulder picks up the hat and tells Henderson he's gone. They got to him first. They beat us, Colonel. Ha 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 ha, you got outsmarted by an alien. Burn! At FBI headquarters, Chief McGrath interrogates Scully as to Mulder's insubordinate and off-the-grid behavior. She cannot lie and tries to stick up for him, but is told that will be all. Mulder is in good spirits. He can't believe he lasted even this long with his behavior. He goes in saying, break a leg, as a pun for good luck. As McGrath is questioning him about his misconduct and failure to obtain proper permission, Mulder reminds him that over a dozen men lost their lives, so the issue shouldn't be about protocol. McGrath goes on to say that he violated a quarantine order, exposing him and others to toxic chemicals. Mulder responds to the allegations by shouting that a cover-up was underway and asks how he explains Max Fennig disappearing into thin air. McGrath responds by saying that Henderson has signed a report saying Max's body was found in a cargo container. Mulder gets up and as he's leaving, asks how he can defend himself against lies that are stamped with an official seal. He continues that they can deny all of what's been discovered, but not for long, for no government agency has jurisdiction over the truth. Chief McGrath angrily approaches Deep Throat, asking why he vetoed their decision to shut down the X-Files and fire Mulder. Deep Throat replies that they wouldn't want Mulder sharing what he thinks he knows with the wrong people, and states, always keep your friends close, but your enemies closer. So yay, The X-Files lives on. And as always, we want to know what you think about this episode in the comments below. And if you'd like to watch more on Movie Shortens, click on the next video or playlist on the screen. Thanks for watching.